Hello, hello, how are you, everybody? Hi. How is everybody on That's tomorrow? So, hello, everybody. How is everyone? Oh, Polly, you were so brave dealing with cutting that piece. It, if I hadn't had a teacher to show me what that part meant, I wouldn't have gotten it either. So, don't worry about not knowing. I'm feeling great. I, honestly, I've gotten so much done lately. I got my flu shot yesterday. Let me figure out my glasses. I got my flu shot yesterday and I talked to my doctor Friday. She you know, has great confidence in my surgeon and said that, you know, that she, she's, she agrees that he needs to go in with an, a, a big incision to get out that, but I'm so, I'm so tickled. I mean, it's just I, it, of course, it'd be wonderful not to have to do it at all. But if you have to, I've got my ducks in a row. So, hello, everybody. And Francis is here. And, oh, this is great. Hi, Miss Nikki. You're such a sweetheart. Polly, oh, my gosh, look at all these people. I'm thrilled. So, ha yes. Pumpkin season is here. Mark got down some decorations from the attic so I could decorate. I was trying to think, do I feel like decorating? It was like, heck yeah, because I don't know what we're going to end up doing for Christmas. But I said, I can, I've got bunches of little pretend uh, pumpkins and gourds, and I put them everywhere. And that falls with today's theme. We're going to make the fabric gourds or pumpkins. So let's see all who's here. Oh, Christmas stuff has already been in the store. That's ridiculous. No, no. <laughs> I know. It's like wait until after, as soon as Halloween is over, then if you want to do Christmas. But, uh, oh, that is funny. So it is so good to see all of you. And Sonia's here. Hi, sweetie. In fact, Sonia, do you see? that uh, quilt and that's a special quilt between Sonia and I and um, I put I have I've had it hanging in the living room all summer and I decided to change out and put a different quilt and I brought it down and I couldn't bear it's so beautiful that I couldn't bear to put it away so I hung it up over the strawberry quilt that was there because I thought this at least is a little bit more of fall colors than strawberries are. So anyway, but that's a very special quilt to me, Miss Sonia. So Linda McCallum is here. This is great. I'm loving seeing all of you. And I'm going to try to do a brief show next Sunday. And then we'll take it, we'll play it by ear after that. So... Oh, wow. I'm reading all these stitches and stuff you're doing. So that is awesome. Hi, Miss Marsha. It is so good to see you. Hi, Alexis. Got the photo of your new fabrics you got. So I'm excited. So I'm so glad to see all of you. Judy Matasek's here. Oh, so good to see you, Judy. I've missed you. Thank you so much. I'm very lucky that I have a kidney to spare. Speaking of this, I have to show you something. I got a package from my daughter in Maryland. And I opened the card first. And reading the card, I just burst into tears. And she wrote in the card that I'm sorry you go you're going to have to lose one of your kidneys. But she said, I made you another one. And I want to show you this. Is this the cutest thing you've ever seen? This is a happy kidney. And she said you can take it with you to the hospital. Oh, Dora has power. You. And she said you, if you get mad or hurting and you want to hit the kidney or squeeze the kidney, I said, no, I'm going to love it. And so I'm going to put it on a necklace. 
And when I'm in the hospital, I'm going to wear this. So to me, when things like this are, are made by my, anybody that cares about me, they put love in it. And um, every stitch, that love, and I feel it. So this is going to, I just boohooed. I had to call her. I boohooed on the phone call, talking to her. But anyway, I love this. My girls have always been wonderful at anything I'm interested in. They find, in fact, Katie said, I could knit her a kidney. I wonder if they have kidney patterns. She said, oh, she found all kinds of kidney patterns. So isn't that sweet? So this is very special to me. It's going to be going with me and keeping me company. So, oh, and I forgot I had something I wanted to put on today, and I forgot. Let me put it on, because if Miss Bonnie peeks in, I want her to see how much I still love this pen. So, let me stick this on real quick. I almost forgot I had it in my pocket. But I'm one of these people that loves gifts that loves thought, the thought behind things. And I get emotional about them. But this is my this is my pink flamingo pen that Miss Bonnie gave me a while back. And it's all very special. I'm very sentimental. How about that? I'm sentimental. So um I, I've got to tell you guys, so you know I'm exercising and I've lost 20 pounds. Well, my blood pressure numbers this morning, it was 117 over 63. Goodness gracious, I was so happy. <laughs> so I tell you what, I will continue this exercise. I don't feel, I feel nervous if I don't exercise daily. So um I only did half of my elliptical trainer time today because um, my back was hurting. And doing this part can pull my back. So I'm going to do the other half after we're done here. So anyway, isn't that great on my blood pressure? I, will, I want to hang in here for quite a while. So I am, I am, I'm woman, hear me roar. So, and... We're all sad because a great, great woman, we lost her this week. And I will rejoice any time from here on out we see the wonderful, love-filled impression of her on Saturday Night Live. But that was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. What a heroic woman. And we're going to miss her terribly. The world is sadder without her. She was a groundbreaker, but she didn't demand attention. She didn't demand accolades. She just quietly went through her life doing the right thing. So what a wonderful, wonderful woman. We're going to miss her terribly. She's been working out with a trainer the last few years to try to be with us as long as she could. And uh, what a wonderful woman. So I just wanted to say that. Um, Women are incredible, and anytime I get a chance to let y'all know or to just celebrate an incredible woman, yes, I've been watching the um, American Experience show from PBS about women's right to vote. And you know what I told Mark? I said, okay, so women got the right to vote 100 years ago this year. We still haven't had a woman vice president or president. That's kind of sobering if you stop and think about it. So, anyway. All right. She was a wonder woman. She absolutely was, Susan. She absolutely was. So, happy emails. Yes, marcia has been sending me sweet emails. So, let, let me show you a couple things today, and then we'll get to the fun, Okay. All right, tacky glue. All right, got a few things here. I finished something, all except 
I've got to put the label on it. It's not done till it has a label, ladies, because we want your work to be remembered. The saddest thing is when I see a gorgeous quilt from a quilt museum, and it says, Maker Unknown. I'd love to know who that woman was and what was going on in her life during that time that she made that. So are you ready? Okay, here we go. Here is the puppy quilt, and it's all finished. It's got what I like to think of as the inner border, which is like the matte board on an artwork, and then it's got the frame. And here's the back. You can see, this will help you see how I quilted it. The puppies get the attention. So I just do a meandering back and forth in the grass so that I don't overpower the puppies. Now in this one, I did put an extra piece of batting behind each puppy so that when, then when I put the regular batting, they would poof out. And let me see if you can kind of see. They do poof out. But here are the puppies. And I'm very, very pleased. So this is now ready to give to that wonderful young man and to let him know what a special young man he is and to keep up his artwork. Because remember, in fact, let me show you again. Let me show you. Here is his original artwork. He did a line drawing of his dogs. That's his original artwork. And he did that from this photo. So I love his artwork. He has done numerous artworks, one of which my daughter has hung up on her dining room wall. And so when he saw that I like doing art quilts, he said, do you think it's possible for you to do one of my pups? And I said, absolutely, I would love to. So there they are. I am... Um, I'm not I'm very I'm a lot happier with the bottom pup size than the top pup size. I'm probably going to keep kind of messing around with those just a little bit. But it's hard to do eyes in a black dog. They don't really show. In fact, I used to do greyhound rescue and black greyhounds were the last to be adopted because people can't see their eyes good and they're a little more afraid. Isn't that sad? So anyway, but here is his quilt. And I did the knife edge that I told you about because I didn't want any binding. I just did a line here as if it was part, whoops, part of the picture frame. And I did a knife edged closure. So there it is. And I will put the label on it and I'll write something to let him know how much I admire his artistic talent and never ever forget or give that up because that's very special very very special so this is for George and I'm, I'm very tickled for him so and I think he's going to be pleased since he is a minimalist type of artist I did the same thing with this. And for him, the puppies were what were important. And so I, I tried to keep to that ideal when I did this. So that's all done. I wanted to make sure to get that done before I went into surgery. So I'll put it right here for right now. Okay. And I'll I'm going to get one of my permanent pens and write something special on here for him. All right. So now I don't have tons uh, planned for today, but 
Oh, thank you. You know, it does feel good. Um, it does feel so good to get something completed. And that's my new thing. I used, I was the queen of unfinished things. But you know what? I've been given a new lease on life, and I'm going to make it count. Because if people can't enjoy what you've made for them, what good is it? Got to get it to them. So anyway, today we're doing fall. We're celebrating the beautiful fall season. And I wanted to show you that you don't have to really spend money to make some great, great fall decorations. We all know how to take construction paper and cut out leaves. I remember my first year, my first fall as a new mom, I took, well, I guess my second, you know, when the children were, when, when my first one was a little older, I took and cut out all kinds of leaves in different color construction paper, and I taped them up on a doorway, and I got such pleasure out of that. So anyway, here, okay, let me start at the beginning. It's usually a very good place to start. <laughs> Don't start singing Do Re Mi. <laughs> so I had a bunch of these. I bought these styrofoam things for next to nothing, I, you know, years ago. And I didn't really know what I was going to do with them. I guess I thought I could roll it, put glue on them and roll them in glitter, but they're kind of big. So then I saw them and said, they're perfect for little pumpkins and gourds. So I'm not going to actually do this for you because when I've, I've spent two nights making these, and I have had white styrofoam all over me. So let me show you real quick what I do. Now, it may be helpful for you to draw a line on the circumference. Well, now look at this. This one has a seam line. Whoops, let me show you. I was looking at it, but you could see it. But this one has a seam line where it came out of the mold. So I'm just going to draw around here. And I honestly did not do this when I did mine. And one of them, oh, if you could see under the fabric, it is a mess because my lines got crooked. I had been making plenty of them, and I got tired of it. But what you're going to want to do is divide it in about four pieces. You could divide it in more pieces, but four is plenty. And just so you can see what I mean, I'll show you. Let me do something that shows up better. But you just take and you mark this line because you're trying to keep it relatively straight. But you mark this line and then you mark the line this way too. All right. So you know, you know how to do that. And then I took I took one sharp knife but I was scared if that knife had had moved it was going to cut me so then I found this which is a heavy duty plastic knife very heavy and you just take and whoops let me see I'm afraid I'm not showing you good enough you take and press in on the line okay and if you have to you might have to do a little sawing motion but you want to get a a crease that's at least a quarter of an inch or a little bit more okay so you do this around all four parts now i don't really use patterns what i do is i take and mark on the fabric, I put the fabric up to the very top point, and I mark, I roll it down, and then I mark it at the bottom point and give it an extra half inch, okay? So if you can see, here's the bottom point, and I give it extra half inch. So now I know how long to make the wedges that are going to make this up. See how I've done the wedges here? Okay, 
Then what I do is I have to figure out what's the width of one quarter of this circumference. I'm not a math kind of girl, y'all. So what I do is I hold this fabric up and I hold it over at least quarter or half an inch. Then I roll the ball and see where it comes out on this line and then give it another half inch. So now I know that between this line and this line and top and bottom, that's where what my wedge has to be. And I just eyeballed it because you just kind of come from a very small, then you go out and come back to a very small. So what I did is I folded it in half and then did my cutting and cut it like this from the wide point in to a half an inch. I make the top, instead of coming to a total point, I make it a half an inch. So I come in here, cut in, come over here, and cut in. And it gives you a cute little oval, okay? It gives you a really cute little oval. Then I use scrap batting. And I do the same thing. In fact, you can see here, I would come up here. So you would have, now this, it's a little sharp, sharper pointed oval. Okay. So I do four pieces of fabric, four pieces of batting. Then I get my glue and I glue, put glue inside that cut line and then inside, I'm going to put a piece of fabric right here. So I'd put glue in this line, and then I would have this line cut already too. And I put glue in that, plenty of glue. Then I take and put a little glue all along here. Then the first thing I do is I put on my piece of batting. I glue on the batting because, you know, it's already got the glue on there. So I just lay the batting down. Then I come back with my glue, and on top of the batting, I do a light little line so that when I then put my fabric on, it has glue to stick on, okay? And then once I get the fabric and the batting on, then I take the same knife that I cut it with, and I wedge it down in the crack. Because remember, there's glue in that crack. So I just wedge it in. And it's fun and easy. And then when I get to the ends, I kind of trim off so there's just enough that I can then shove in right around this thing. So that's how I did them. And I hope that that makes some sense to you. And what I'm going to, what I have to do now, and you're, you know, your hands will get a little messy with the sticky glue. And, um, okay, your hands will get a little bit messy, but this is, let me see, this is the first one I made, and I did alternating sides. And so now what I have to do is I have to do something to cover this up, okay? L. And to make this one, I started with the ball, and... I said, I want to make a, a taller gourd, and I wanted to do it out of a different color, but just to be different. And so I started with this with just one seam in the ball, and I cut the fabric, two pieces, the shape I wanted the gourd to be. And so I did the, the batting and shoved it in here, and then when it came to this part that was above the, the ball that gives it a base, I just... Um, hand sewed the edges together and be right before I closed the very top I stuffed excess pieces of batting in to give it this shape so now let me get out my hold on one second girl I want to show you how I'm going to make the stem top and the leaves because I want to decorate each one to make sure 
In case people aren't sure what it is, they'll know after I'm done. So what I'm going to do is I've got this steam a seam 2, and I'm going to draw what I think a gourd or pumpkin leaf looks like. Let's see. I think they're kind of big leaves like this. Okay, so let me do, whoops, you, you can't, that, you know what, that sun's kind of bright, but I'm going to do a great big sloppy leaf like this. Now, if you want, feel free to look up exactly what the leaf looks like. All right. But it's something similar to this. And then I'm going to take this fabric. Let me close this shade because I can't even see what I'm doing. It is a bright day out there. And I like the steam of scene too here. Diana Wright is here. Hi, honey. Okay. The reason I want you to use steam of scene two here is because you're going to put this fusible in between two layers of fabric so that you've got fabric on both sides. So I'm just going to quickly cut this out so we can get to ironing it. But you just cut out the fabric shape, barely a fraction, a smidge larger than the Steam of Seam 2 paper. Just a fraction larger, so hopefully we won't have any Steam of Seam 2 oozing out. But I have a pressing cloth, so... Okay, and this is, if any of you, and if you don't have the styrofoam balls, do not worry one bit, because you can just use a big mass of batting instead of, you can just use a big gob of wad of batting for, instead of the styrofoam ball, so let me get my irons heating up. Let me bring this over. And I'm going to lay the one fabric down. Put the sticky side right down. Whoops, let me see. It'll go better if I use the other. Okay. Make sure you put that sticky side down or you will be very unhappy. Now, to make sure I keep my ironing table tidy, I'm going to use this no-stick paper, fold it over, and that way if any um, oozes out, it'll be stuck between the non-stick paper. And then I'm just going to press this real good. Ah! Now that's cool. I like that idea. I love reading y'all's comments. Y'all give me very good ideas. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take and peel off the paper. Lay this down with the sticky side up. Then lay this one down over it, making sure I get those edges pretty good. Now, if you want to be real fancy, you could put a tiny little pipe cleaner in the leaf. And that way, you could have a moldable leaf. But I have a feeling if I just let it cool with it a little bit scrunched, 
it will be just fine. So now I have a leaf that can go up on top of this gourd. And for this one, I'm going to take some of this fabric. Oh, let me plug in my hot glue gun. But I'm going to take some of this fabric. And I am just not in the mood of doing a, in the mood to do a lot of sewing. I'm just not. So I'll go ahead and use one of these that has the little thing. In fact, I don't need this silver ribbon. So I'm going to cut this off. Throw that away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue this around and around to look like a stem. Because it doesn't have to be neat and tidy. It just has to cover up that pretty, that silvery thing. So, let's see if I can get some glue out, or if it's not, might not be hot enough yet. Let me see. But I like using hot glue because it sticks quickly, and that's what I'm looking forward to. But anyway, this is, this, oh, did I, uh, it is so good to see Diana right. We've got photos from her, and I've got new baby photos. I've got the final, um, final, my final fall garden pictures, because I don't think I'll be taking many more. And it's funny. They know by the length of day. They just kind of start, they slow down production, let me tell you. So I've been noticing all of the spiders laying their egg cases. I always think of, uh, what is it called? Web, Charlotte's Web. I couldn't, re I shouldn't re forget Charlotte. That's my granddaughter. So let me see now. Ah, here comes some glue. So I'm going to put a little bit there first. I'm trying not, I should have a bowl of cold water. But anyway, okay, so I'm going to pop this on here. And I'm just going to kind of fold the edges in and put it on. Okay. Whoops. Okay. So I'm just going to fold the edges and put it on. It doesn't have to be fancy. This is just for you to have fun. This is just a way to, you know, one of the problems we're having with the pandemic is, is there aren't ways to keep track of time like we used to have. And I, that's one of the reasons I went ahead and decorated. I said, you know what? If I need to work harder to create seasons, to create celebrations, that's what we, you know, that will make us feel better. All right, so I'm just going to keep going with the hot glue, take this little piece of fabric, and smoosh it on around, and then get some more glue, and just make it look like a little nub of a stem. Okay, a little bit more glue. Look, see how easy this is? And you know, I, don't, I know this is really a quilting show, but I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I enjoy any kind of crafting. So what I'm going to do is just take it and kind of smush it like this. And that way it looks like a stem. Then I'm going to take this leaf and I'm going to hot glue it onto the stem. Just like this. And now I wish I had a dark green marker. Oh, I sure do have a dark green marker. Hold on just a second, guys. I sure do. I forgot I left my markers here. Yay. Oh, whoops. Hold on. Okay. So, now that I have, and this is a fabric, permanent fabric marker. And now I can draw in the veining.
And since it is fall, the little pumpkin leaves will be starting to die. So I can come in here with some yellow and kind of make it look like, you know, it's been picked been plucked off the vine and yes it's starting to turn yellowy with fall so and to keep this from just flipping too much I am going to put a little touch of glue right there which will kind of keep it in place and I want to make it look a little more realistic so I'm going to put a touch of glue down here and then just kind of fold that edge of the leaf. Isn't that, isn't that cute? Now look how easy that was. Wasn't that a piece of cake? So there we go. All right. I think I might want work on a couple more of these while we're sitting and talking. But anyway... Oh, Paul Lynn playing Templeton. Wasn't he cute? Oh, my God. He was so excited when he got his nasty bits of garbage. But anyway, look at this. This cost me nothing. I had the little styrofoam ball for years. I probably moved him here from Maryland. And then just take little bits of scraps of fabric. And now I think that's really cute. The hard part is you want him to be able to sit up good. And so you have to kind of take them and smash them against the surface to get a flat spot. But um, since we have time to just talk, I'll make some more. Is that okay with y'all? Because now I want to make sure I get these totally finished and go put them upstairs. And uh, I even thought if I had had some twine, which I couldn't find, I could take twine and hot glue it around this little top thing. And then that would act like, that would act like the stem. So I'm going to set this right here so you can still be amazed at how creative I am. <laughs> and while we're talking, I'm going to make a couple more leaves. So I like the shape of that leaf. It looks pretty good. And, you know, I didn't go look it up to see if it was exactly right, but that's okay. Hi, Betty Middleton. So good to see you, hon. So how are all of you? How are all that rotten egg? Oh, my gosh, that's right. <gasps> One day I accidentally broke a rotten egg in the kitchen. Oh, my goodness. That is the worst smell. You can't imagine. Oh, uh, I love, I love that y'all like this stuff, too, because you know what? It's kind of part of the joy of life. I, I always say I'm very much in touch with my inner child because you know what? That's where the fun is. So, oh, Alexis has a headache. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But anyway, I when I showed the white gourd, to Mark, I'm not going to tell you what he thought it looked like, but I, I'm sure once I put the stem on it and the leaf, it can't be mistaken. So, he's a mess. What am I going to do with him? He's a mess. So, okay. Let me see if I'm trying to figure out what pen... Oh, yes. Oh, rotten eggs are the worst. The worst. Uh, you know, I like friction pens, but they don't last long. I don't know if they dry up or what. Huh, frustrating. Okay, well, I'll try to use this then. But every time I see a spider, like we had a tunnel spider right outside our living room window. And I left it there because I find them fascinating. 
And, you know, they're doing us a favor because they can take care of a whole bunch of bugs. And um, so, but I noticed that she's all done now. She has moved on to the great spider web in the sky. And, um, but they leave their egg pods behind. And uh, so I make sure that I try to try to leave the eggs in place. So that we'll have new ones for next year. I'm kind of one of those silly kumbaya people. And we used to have a tunnel spider on my porch in Maryland. And I would actually get brave enough to try to kind of touch her real quick. and But careful enough that I didn't get bitten. I did not want to get bitten by a spider. Because you never know which ones will pack a wallop, you know. But I just used to love to watch her, and she would be down in her tunnel web, kind of looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> but, okay, I'll, I'm going to cut out a couple more. So what else is going on with you people? Has anybody else done any decorating for the fall? Oh, hi, Kirsten Cook. Rosh Hashanah, that's right. Ah, oh, pine cones, acorn sparkle with gold. Oh, that sounds lovely. And you know what I did one year is I went and got a bisque, you know, the fired, it's been clay item that's been fired once. And then I took my own acrylic paints and painted it. And then sprayed it with an acrylic sealer. And it is the cutest, cutest um, Halloween scene. And I love it. And it means so much more because I painted it. <laughs> so. But um, is, is Dora still here? Because I'm hoping that she got her power back on and she is doing good. It is fun. I just love fall gets me all excited. And growing up near Williamsburg, Virginia, fall was the most beautiful time of year. And I, one time, I went on a date, a double date with another couple. And we went into Williamsburg. And oh, my goodness. If the guy I had been there with had been a better person, it would have been the most romantic date you could have imagined. But, you know, 18-year-old guys can be jerks. <laughs> but um, I wish I lived close enough to drive through Williamsburg because all of the colors and the, the architecture go perfectly with this time of year. So I do miss that. I really do. But um, luckily, I live reasonably close to the Blue Ridge Parkway. So I think that one day when I want to get out of the house and am co and comfortable enough to drive, I think Mark and I'll take a trip to the Blue Ridge. I do, I do. Okay, now I have four leaves and I have four pumpkins. I'm done. Okay. So now... To make it a little easier, I'm going to put the steam -a seam on before I cut it out. It wastes a little bit, but boy, is it easier. So, okay. Move my hot glue gun out of the way. There is nothing worse than getting a hot glue burn. I know y'all know that. All right, so now... Let me line up, let me line up these here. This is tricky. See, normally, you know me, I'm so cheap, but, okay, I think I about have it. All right. I'm going to carefully 
iron it onto this fabric and then I'll cut it out and I'm trying to only iron where I have it drawn because that way I can still use the other part of it. It won't be ironed onto unnecessary fabric. So I'm being careful. Okay. I think that's pretty good. All right. So let's keep chatting while I'm working. Hi, Vicki Robles. Hi, sweetheart. Well, the uh, ladies probably have a lot more going on than I do. But I am going to try a week after my surgery, I'm going to try to see if somehow I can come on and talk for a little bit. I might not be, a, it might have to be two weeks after my surgery. Because uh, I'm really not going to push myself. But um, I, ha I might try to do, if I can't do a um, live stream, a week after my surgery, I'll try to do a Jitsi. So that way, because I'm going to miss you guys. So I think that would be good. But see how I didn't iron? I just was careful to iron where I needed. So now I've this is all still good. All right. Now let me cut this one out. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, it's probably better if I wait two weeks because one week, I, I forget, I always forget how exhausted I am after a surgery. I had my neck surgery two years ago and I tried to go out of the house two weeks after and it was too much for me. So yeah, we better go ahead and just say, I'll see you in two weeks. So... My granddaughter is going to be 16. How exciting. So she's getting involved in cosplay during this time at home because they're doing school remotely, which I totally am for. I don't know why. There's a push to send these kids back to school. But anyway... Um, but anyway, I'm going to give her some cash. I'm so tickled that she wants to sew and get fabric. And so I'm very, very excited for her. So I'm going to give her a very generous birthday present. And anything I can do to encourage creativity in my grandkids is really important to me. Very important. Okay. Let me just check something really quickly here. I want to see how I put these on. I might have put these on the wrong way. That's what I'm worried about. So let me check. Nope. Nope. That's good. Okay. All right. Now. Oh, I know why I thought I did it wrong, because I only cut out one thickness. So I'll have to color around them and do another one. Okay. Okay, this... Some of this didn't get stuck on, and some of it did, so. So, yep, I'm even thinking about pumpkin pies. Oh, Vicki, did you lose your mom, hon? Hi, Michelle! Uh, <laughs> yes, you're right, Michelle. Oh, my gosh. I was rather drunk after that surgery, wasn't I? I tend to be a little sensitive to it. And uh, 
And so, you know, it's like, oh, I can do this. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> oh, what a mess. What a mess. I tell you what, Michelle deserves a friend award for taking me in when I had my hand surgery. Oh, my goodness gracious. There's got to be. There's got to be. Oh. Okay. Well, this is good enough. I'll leave the rest of that on there. All right. Oh, I just thought of something really cool. Since your boss went to get some pumpkin to make a pumpkin pie and there was none to be found. Oh, was there no pumpkin in a can even? Ooh, ooh. You know, I makes you wonder because of this whole COVID thing. I tell you what, I'm I'm fed up now with all this. I'm angry that we didn't do better. I'm fed up. So I know y'all are probably feeling the same way too. I'm ready to be back into a life. All right. So I need to do I need to take one of these. And put it on here. Okay, let me get my, my non-stick paper. You know, when I look at Canada's numbers and all, I just get so frustrated that we could be done by now if we had done it right. Whoops. I don't want to cut up my non-stick paper. But anyway, so I have pictures of my grandsons to show you. And pictures that y'all sent in. In fact, I don't know if Cheryl Lemon is here. I forgot to show her picture um, Thursday night. So I will make sure to show her picture today. So she did some cute things. I, I just love how talented y'all are. And it's amazing to me. Y'all try something the first time and are so successful. So way to go, ladies. I really am proud of y'all. Very talented people you are. All right. So let's see what y'all are talking about. Oh. Oh, okay. So you could use a butternut squash in instead. Okay. You know, I always see those beautiful butternut squashes, but I'm not always sure what to... My daughter was really good at cooking those. But I didn't quite... I don't know. I didn't have her talent, so... Let me get this one ironed on. This is a little different with me just kind of playing with this stuff with y'all here. But I will in about 10 minutes, we'll go to photos. And that will be fun. So now I've got another leaf ready to go. And I'm going to draw the veining in on this one too. This is start. I better be careful. It's starting to look like a holly leaf. I don't want it to turn into a holly leaf. Okay, I'm gonna do a little. I kind of like making it a little lifelike. So I'm gonna add two spots of glue to this one. 
and get it kind of curling both ways. Oh, and then don't forget, I can't forget my yellow. Oh, look at Susan. Wow, okay. Well, that sounds easy enough. I love sweet potatoes with a little bit of brown sugar and maybe a little marshmallow. Mm. It doesn't take much to make a sweet potato really gorgeous. All right, so now... I'm going to cut another strip of another strip for putting a stem on. I think I'll do, well, let me go ahead and do this one. All right, so first I'm going to put a spot of glue here. And put this down on it. Ouch! Well, that got me that time. All right, now, I'm going to, oh, I know what I needed to do. I need to put another glue stick in this puppy. Okay, being very careful this time. Let me wrap it. Okay. With this one, I don't have the hard metal thing to put the stem on, so I've got to be careful. Whoops. I will, Miss Nikki. I don't want burnt fingers. Don't you hate when you take a bite of chili or soup when it's too hot and it burns your tongue? Oh, gosh, I hate that. Then nothing tastes right after that. Ugh. So see how I kind of keep it a little bit wide and then start narrowing it in. And this is just making do with what you have. And I love stuff that's free and easy. You can't, and it's still, I mean, stop and think about it. You've still done something that most people don't do, even though it's free and easy. So what I'm going to do now is try to finish up and end up giving this stem a kind of interesting finish. There. And cut these threads off a little bit. Just a little bit. And then take, you know, I'll put the leaf right here. All right. There we go. So now here is. I have a pumpkin and a gourd. And these were just scraps of fabric. Oh. Oh, wow, that does sound good. Polly's a vegetarian. You know what, Susan? That's a smart thing. I had a, somewhere I had those little things you put on your finger when you're doing the ironing. But I think these are cute. I don't know. What do y'all think? Yes, they're homemade. But I think they're pretty simple. And I think the leaf and the stem really bring them to life. Okay. I think I had two more to make. Don't know where the other one is. Ah! 
<laughs> Y'all are so cute. Thank you. <laughs> I tell you what, Susan and Nikki would be great on the, um, what is that circuit where people talk to you and make you feel good about yourself and build up your confidence? Oh, yes, baby. They would be stars at that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just putting this on the fabric so I waste less fabric. There we go. And then I'll just cut this out and then give this a press. And then this one's ready to do. And there's one more I should have somewhere. I've got to figure out where it is. This time I'm cutting off a little bit of that black line. I think it showed up too much. Anyway. So I watched a movie the other night. We had it on our DVR for like a month. But it was the original Rear Window with Jimmy Stewart and Grace Kelly. Oh my God, that was fun to watch. And what was also interesting was how outdated the language was. There's my other leaf. Um, I was really surprised how outdated, you know, talking about women nagging their husbands. Oh, nag, nag, nag their husbands. And it's like, excuse me? It was called their opinion <laughs> I didn't like that part let me tell you it was like okay so that's I have a hard time with a lot of old TV shows or movies because of that it's like how dare they you know don't talk like that and it's great if you can tear the fabric it makes the stem look even more grungy okay so now I think I'll do this one. And I, I love this um, ombre because you can pick whatever color you want. Well, exactly. I mean, is there, I don't think that they don't use the term nag for men, but men get to tell women anything they want. So hello, but um it just makes you realize from 1954 to now, things have changed. And even Mark picked up on a couple of the things. Like, um, Jimmy Stewart's character was a photographer in this. And Grace Kelly uh, loved him. But he didn't... He, he didn't really want to get married, he thought. And... Then, when he was talking about his life couldn't change, she'd have to give up everything to go with him. Really? Grace Kelly? And you're going to make her jump through hoops? Tell me again. <laughs> so, I thought it was kind of funny. But I love the fact that Mark picked up on that. It's like, wait a minute, you know. All right. Yes, yes, I tell you the truth. And you know what? The world is better if everybody has a say and a vote. I'm sorry. The world is much better. If only certain people are in charge, it's not going to be a happy place. Like they say, if mama ain't happy, then nobody's happy. And, uh, you know, if you try to bully people, you're not going to have a happy life. Okay, so here is another stem. And let me do the coloring on this leaf. But lots of yellow. I like aging the leaf. And I tell you what, these I got these fabric markers from Joann's a few years ago. And they are so much fun. I find plenty of ways... To use this, whether you're color, letting your grandkids color a t-shirt or um, one of those pillowcases that they can color. 
you know, these things are mighty handy. E or even if you've got a little piece of damaged fabric. Um, okay, let me put the glue over here this time. Give it a little squeeze. And then I think I'll do over here. Okay. So, and see, I don't have to have it all the way squeezed together just to give it a little realism. I like that. Okay. And now I'm going to glue it right here and right there. And I'm going to take these upstairs where I can enjoy them. All right, here's this one. All right, I only have one more. I'm going to cut off more of that black. So what's going on? Hi, Angela, Adele, honey. What happened? Oh, you found out that you have type 2 diabetes? Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. Oh, I'm very sorry, hon. I tell you what, the best thing you can do for yourself, and I know because I have it too, the best thing you can do is to lose whatever weight they're telling you to do. I did not lose the weight when they told me to as, as much as I should have, and um, I'm doing it now, and my blood sugar numbers have come down. And I'm feeling much better. So if you jump on it right away, you can hopefully make yourself feel better very soon. So diet, exercise, and keeping a normal weight are going to be really important for you, sweetie. But if you, if you do those things, you should be able to live a good, healthy life. And with the new medications they have now, it's so much better. But don't put your head in the sand. The most important thing is to listen, follow directions, pay attention to what they say, sweetheart. Because that way you'll be in charge. You can control this yourself. It's one of those diseases that we have a lot more say in than we realize. Okay, sweetheart. I know it's scary. I, I remember when they told me. And I lost some weight right away and then I kind of got slack. So I'm not going to. You know, I was, I, I was just read Polly's discussion. I was told, turn the other cheek, turn the other cheek. Oh, no. You know, most bullies, they are truly afraid. And they just are bullies because they're trying to hide how inferior they feel. And usually if you strike back at them, you can win. But I told my children, never start a fight. But if, if one comes to you, then... Do what you need to to take care of yourself. And I said I would back them up. I would go into school and talk to them about it. My daughter in middle school was picked on by a boy who was always taking her lunchbox and all of that. And just, just harassing her, making her miserable. And I called his father and said, your son has a problem. And he said, well... You know, I, he's got a crush on her. And I said, well, he's gone about it the wrong way, and I want him to knock it off. 
because I thought I'm not letting I'm not sending my child to school to be picked on let me tell you well it looks like I adhered both of these leaves together so it's going to stay like this so this one's not going to be the full color but that's okay all right so let's see i'll make this part a little sticky and i'll make over here a little sticky but angela if you take it seriously sweetheart and do what they say you will be fine i promise just don't get complacent because you have to tell yourself no food tastes good enough to have complications from that disease. It's like, do I want this bad enough to feel really poorly? Now, will you be starting on metformin or are you going to have to have injectables? I'm on metformin, and um, I'm under control. Like seven years later, my blood sugar is under control, and that's just where I need to be. And I'm hoping if I lose the amount of weight that I'm wanting to, that maybe I can really decrease my medication. Because my body is still making insulin. I'm just insulin resistant. Okay. I am oh I have been feeling really good. Now that the anxiety now the anxiety is more under control. I because I just now I all I have to worry about is my surgery. Thank goodness. But and I gotta be honest, since I've lost twenty pounds, I'm feeling so much better. And I told my daughter yesterday, I said, I'm going to stay on this diet until I lose a bunch more because it's easier to stay in this mindset than to spoil myself and say, eat whatever I want because I feel sorry for myself because I have to have surgery. Uh-uh. No, don't do that. So I am going to stay in, in my diet and as long as I'm eating very healthily and I, all my snacks, would, my doctor would be so proud of me. Well, I talked to her Friday and she is proud of me. But I am, I am being good and it feel, I feel better. My blood pressure numbers are already better. Exercising is never going to be something I like. It just is. But I love the way it, it makes me feel. I love the energy it gives me. And so, guess what? I've just had to come to terms with this is going to be the rest of my life. It's what I have to do. So, if that will help any of you, I hope. Because I tell you the truth, if I had just realized this sooner, I'd be a whole lot better off. But unfortunately, my weight brings higher risk of cancer and all kinds of things. And you know what? I've got two brand new grandchildren that I want to see grow up. So, all right. So now I'm done with these. Let me move all this stuff out of the way so you can see my little fall show. And let's get looking at some photos so that y'all can see them before you have to run. But, but Angela, I know you can do it, hon. I know you can do it. Okay. So I think I might get Mark to kind of whack these so I can get a flat spot for them. Because they're all turning crazy. They're, they're looking just crazy. So here. Here we go. And I love making the leaves look a little animated. I think that's precious. Ah! <laughs> okay. So as you can see, I need to give them some 
Mark will be able to smash it against the driveway or something and give it a flat spot for me. Or else I'll have to hot glue them to a tray or basket. <laughs> but there they are. And I think, I think they're cute. I think they're just adorable. And it's just from stuff I had. I didn't have to buy a thing to make them. And uh, so there we go. Now I'm going to turn off the overhead light and show you some fantastic photos. And I'll be right back. And then before we go again, I will show you my puppy quilt that I finished for the young man. So I'm very excited about that. Sorry, spending time cleaning up. It's like Mark has taught me, clean up before I start something else. <laughs> and it really is good, but <laughs> I'll be right back, guys. And I found my leaf that I had that I had missed. It was laying on the floor. All right, here is my puppy quilt. One last showing because I will be giving it to the young man who I made it for. So, and that's my favorite face right there. I love that little face. So here is my quilt. Here is the back so you can see how I quilted it. Everything just doing it minimalistically so that I, it can be focused on the subject. All right. Now let's see your photos. Okay. Got to clean up all my mess. Here we go. Oh, I did it again. I'm always touching something I shouldn't. Okay. Let's bring up these photos. Alexis. Okay, Alexis. Let's bring up. Here is. Uh-oh. I think I just forgot again his name. Chromium. I think. <laughs> I love, I love, love, love her, um, what's it called, embroidery, hand embroidery. And here were some fabrics she bought recently. She went back and got some new ones, and they're beautiful. I love that Asian one. Well, she's got several Asian ones. Then look at this with the candy, and it does look like a city, um, does look like my city lights fabric there. So beautiful fabric. Doesn't it get you excited now? It's like you can't wait for the next project. So I think the bug has bitten Miss Alexis. All right. Um, one last time, I'll show Miss B. Hepworth's contented cow. I'm so jealous of English cows. They're so happy. So oh, that is just precious. Thank you, Miss B. Happy, happy, happy. All right. Then Miss Bonnie, I wanted to show one more time her Christmas in Jacksonville. Isn't this pretty? Very, very pretty. Outline hand embroidery, or otherwise known as red work. Then I just wanted to show again her beautiful rocker. This is my favorite corner of her house. So, so pretty. Okay. Now let's see who. Cheryl Lemon. I'm not going to forget Miss Cheryl this time. Okay. I'm sorry I forgot to show it on Thursday. But look at this cute quilt. She was with a group of ladies, and they had gotten so tickled at this squirrel hanging upside down to get food, she turned it into a quilt. And, oh, this is something else she's working on. Aren't those colors dynamic? The three primary colors. Primary meaning that you don't take two colors, 
to it just they are the basic color where others are secondary like green you use yellow and blue orange you use red and yellow well primary are just your red yellow and blue always always then here is her squirrel quilt completed and I think she said they had it hanging up because they love it. Isn't that wonderful? What fun. She, that all of them, she had in making it and the ladies are having enjoying it. So thank you, Miss Cheryl. I'll come back to mine. But here we go. We have Diana Wright is very busy visiting with her mother-in-law. And... Let's see what else. And her new furniture. And beautiful job she did painting her son's room. Beautiful work. Now, let's see. Go back. And they had the pool decking finished with a decorative finish. I wanted to be able to show you that. Whoops, there it is. Look at that. It's really pretty. And hopefully it makes it not hot to walk on. But very, very nice. And there's her mother-in-law enjoying that pool. Okay, now let's go to quilting. She, oh, this is a gorgeous one. Wait till you see this. That looks an awful lot like hexagons to me. I know it's not, but you know what I'm saying? It's that difficultness. I go, oh my gosh, gosh. I, I would have a hot flash trying to do that one, ladies. But that's beautiful, Diana. It's absolutely beautiful. And you know, Diana's the perfect person to do that because she's very talented and very precise. And I love her elephant pillow holding a balloon. That's beautiful, sweetheart. All right, and we know that Diana will be back spending more time with us as soon as she's able, but she's doing something very important right now, which is spending time with family. This is Dora's. Um, this was the sky taken before the storm came, before Hurricane Kathy came through, or Sally, pardon me, Hurricane Sally came through. And then this is one of her wonderful dragon quilts. So we're so glad that Dora made it through that hurricane. Now I hear there's a tropical storm that's going to get um, Galveston. So hopefully they'll be okay. And then Miss Jody. Gosh, she's a talented lady. I am just amazed at her. And when I get well, I'm going to try one of these quilts. Just beautiful, sweetie. Isn't this lovely? Look at that. What a tribute to her dog. What a tribute to that kind old soul. And there he was in the real photo. Just beautiful. So I'm always in awe of the talent you all bring. Even when it comes to my middle daughter, my second daughter, Katie, she lives down the street from a auction house. And often when they don't sell things, they give them away or sell them um, for just a, a tiny, tiny bit of money. So she's refinishing this. This is a dry sink. And she sanded the top and cleaned up all the rest. Here's her first layer of stain. And then she'll polyurethane it. Here's a drawer, and it was interesting. The drawer is a quarter sawn oak, but when she took, did paint remover on the top, she found it looked like it was just artist rendering of quarter sawn oak because there's no quarter sawn oak left there anymore. And uh, I think she would have known if she had gone through the veneer. So here she has painted it with a matte blue. Isn't that beautiful? And I love the little metal casters. That's an old touch. I don't know how old this piece is, but I would assume it's over 100 years old. So I will show you the next picture once she's fully done with it.
but and then she'll turn around and sell it. Very talented girl. So here, Linda McCollum. I want to show you three of hers that I just. I have to go through these folders and clean them out from time to time, but I couldn't bear to part with these yet. They're just so beautiful. Whoops. My, I love that reflection of the moon. Look at the fabric she used. Just amazing. And look at this. Looks like a dust storm to me. It's beautiful. All right. Let's see who else now. Michelle. Michelle sent me a link. This is... Biza Butler, um, very talented art quilter. And, oh, my gosh, I was so amazed at this work and how realistic it is, even though it's using all different kinds of colors and fabric. There is not a problem at all of knowing exactly, exactly what the scene is. Just beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So thank you, Michelle, sending me the link to that because it is gorgeous. Look at this. Look at the intensity in that young man's face. It's just absolutely beautiful for a young woman's face. Just absolutely beautiful. So thank you. All right. Oh, there was one more. I'm sorry. Bring this up. But, you know... If that person just started speaking to you, you wouldn't be surprised. Isn't that amazing? So I just love what you can do with fabrics. And it doesn't even have to be realistic. It can be, it can set the tone, the mood. So amazing. And that's what Jody teaches us with hers that she's done. Here's another one of Sun, Nadine's Sunrises. Here's Nadine's Christmas quilt. A new cabinet she just got. As you know, I have the her video of her new studio space. She loves her pre-cuts. One day when she's not looking, I might have to go visit her pre-cuts. They're beautiful. And I love her storage ideas. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, she lives in Germany, so she orders most of her quilting supplies from the U.S. And so pre-cuts are the way to go. All right. So if you want to see the rest of her studio, go look at my channel and you'll see the Dean Studio. All right. Miss Polly has been a busy gal. And I read and can't believe it, but this is only the third quilt she's ever made. And look at her. I mean, this is an experienced quilter. This is not a beginner quilt, and she's doing a beautiful job of it. So keep up the great work, Miss Polly. I think it's going to be striking. Well, I, I, Y'all just never cease to amaze me. Never cease to amaze me. All right, and then we have Robin. I just love this. I left this image on because what's better for the upcoming first day of fall than to see this maple leaf table runner. Wonderful, Miss Robin. All right. Now, I think, let's see real quickly. I have Cheryl. Miss Cheryl did a quilt for her nephew, and he was in the marching band. He's a drummer like my son. And in this wonderful... Isn't this just wonderful? I love it. Those are all the programs they did during their marching band seasons. So that's just wonderful. All right. Beautiful job. So even and smooth and quite a treasure that that young man will love. Okay. And then... Just to give you a recap of Miss Susan's quilt she's been working on. Miss Bonnie has been working her hard. Keeping up with her. They actually, they sit and enjoy the evening chatting and working on handwork. And I just think that is fabulous. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Whoops. I didn't mean to go past that fast. Look at those beautiful tulips and those vines and leaves. Very talented. 
Very talented, Miss Susan. Wonderful. All right, let's see. Yep, that's it for except I have a couple things to show you. And I think I have a couple new grandson quilts. I mean grandson photos. Like here are my son and my grandson Russell making faces. And uh, that's so cute. And then let me see. I thought it was something. Oh, they're, they're having the baby's professional, uh, the baby professionally photographed. And see the baby over here in the half wine barrel. Okay. Um, I think that's for that one. Now let me go back. And... Donnie, I think I've got a couple new ones of Donnie. Oh, this is so cute. This is so sweet. This is a very tired mama and baby. Isn't that wonderful? I love that photo. And then here's Mr. Russell had a play date over. And there is he's sitting with his Nana having a book read. Here they both are on the couch. They're, that new baby loves to be held all the time. All right, let me see if there are any other new ones. I think I might have gotten most of them. So, yep, I think that was that. Okay. Then now I will go back. But as you can see, they're thriving. They're doing beautifully. All right. The last pictures to show you are of my late garden. So these are probably the last photos I'll take of my garden for the year. And I had just decorated the front porch, you'll see. But I tell you what, I love caladiums. I just love them. They give you such bang for your buck. They are just beautiful. Very easy to care for. Here's the one up close. Now when frost comes, I need to dig them out before frost because the bulbs are so delicate that they will just freeze and turn to mush. This is a dragon wing begonia. I have these two plants I have overwintered for three years and then put them back out. And this, is my, this is my flag I had up down by the street. Well, I had a different one. Somebody decided they needed to steal it. So Mark said, buy another one, hon. We're, we get to have a flag. Let's buy another one. And now we have it up near the house. Because if someone tries to steal it, I'm going to go out there and beat them with a the broom. <laughs> but... Um, and here's my mantel place decorated for fall. As you can see, I'm kind of excited about fall. Here is the tomato plant that's now almost 10 feet tall. The cherry tomato was indeterminate. You see it comes all the way to the top of this 4x4. Four four. The other tomato plant with the larger tomatoes was a semi-determinant, so it only got about six feet tall. There's another caladium. Look at that pretty thing. Then my herb pot here and some lantana and more caladiums. I tell you what, everything got a little bit too big this year. So it, my, my uh, deck looks like a jungle. Look at this. So everything did really well. I got new pots, new soil, and I fertilized twice. And boy, did things do well this year. I'd like to think that I'm going to go dig up those caladiums when it's time and save those bulbs because there's something else. And you, as you can see, I have a tomato almost ready, but they only got to about six feet tall. But it was a very good year for tomatoes. I, I'm very pleased. I'm very happy. 
These are the New Guinea impatiens. They take more sun than regular impatiens. This is mostly regular impatience under my shade cloth. I decided this time to try to put one of the sweet potato vines in a hanging pot. And boy, has it done well. So it's kind of neat to see it growing down like that. Here's a lantana and a sweet potato vine. And another New Guinea impatience. Regular impatience. You see, I deal with a lot of shade, so most of my plants are shade loving. But I was very happy with how everything worked. My daughter had to go buy me the plants this year because of the COVID. I was afraid to go out in public. So she, I gave her a check and she went and bought them all and did an outstanding job picking them out too. Those are my house plants that are going to have to come in soon because it's getting chilly in the night. But they love being outside for the summer. Oop, I don't know what that was. I think that's, whoops, okay, here we go. But those plants just went nuts, didn't they? <laughs> I mean, they did beautifully. Here's a shrimp plant. Isn't that cute? More lantana. All right. I think that was it, sweeties. Thank you for taking the time to look at my garden plants because I know they're not going to be here for but so much longer. We'll see. You know, you would think with the, the climate the way it is that we would have plants t until December, but we don't. And when the days start getting shorter and shorter, they kind of go, we're done. All right, any questions? Oh, <laughs> Vicki, you are so sweet, honey. I, I'm just, I, I feel guilty sometimes having y'all have to look at them, but I just got so proud of myself this year. I think I did a good job. <laughs> and, you know, I can't have anybody over to come see them. So guess what? Y'all are here. <laughs> so, oh, so how is everybody? Any questions? Anything going on? Oh, Vicki, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Vicki and I have something in common, difficult kidneys. So, <laughs> and Vicki, I don't know if you were here, but my daughter said, since you have to lose one of your kidneys, I made you a new one. Is that sweet? That is very, very sweet. So, hmm. I tell you what, you know, sometimes when they were little, we were like, what? <laughs> you kids driving me nuts. And then they get all grown up and it's like, I miss them. I'm, I miss spending time with them. So I tell you what, you got to love them. So anyway, well, anything else going on? If not, I will get ready to say goodbye and then go upstairs and find a good place for all my new pumpkins. Aren't they cute? So, so easy. Um, green and red quilt pattern behind you. Okay. I, let me go turn on the big light and I'll tell you all about it. Okay. Okay, that green, the green and red quilt is a pattern I made up myself. And what I did is I made a mandala center um, or a mandala, mandala center. And I had 
Uh, Miss Sophie sent me a gift certificate last Christmas, and I bought this fabric with it. And it's called Pros, P-R-O-S-E, and those are all peonies, peonies. And I love peonies. They're my favorite flower. And so I made that. I made the mandala center, and then I... Um, I'm trying to remember if I used another pattern as an idea for the blocks around it, but I love that. It is so, so special. Linda, take good care of yourself. And I think I did get a little bit of a blister from that one hot glue gun burn, but I think I'll make it. I just have a little tiny blister right there on the side of my finger. I think it might get me out of cooking dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, I love that. I love that quilt so much. Very special to me. Well, thank you very much. And I guess it's time to say goodbye. But I will be on here next week. I might not be able to stay longer than about an hour because I have a feeling I'm going to be headed to the hospital in the wee hours of the morning. So I'll have to get plenty of good sleep. And uh, so, uh, all right, people, you are the best. And yes, Alexis, we want to see all your stuff you're doing. So that would be great. Thank you for spending this time with me. You mean the most to me. Have a very good week. Stay. Thank you, sweetheart. Stay safe. Wear your mask. It's the best thing you can do to stay well. All right, guys. All right. Well, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, Susan, so I'll have to see. I might be a little tired by the time I get home. It's a later appointment, so I might be late getting home. But if I'm not there, you know I'm thinking of you lovely ladies. All right, guys. Take good care of yourself. Do something special just for you. Take good care of your kidneys. <laughs> Y'all are the best. Have a good week, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great, great week.